and uh, we're off to the races hello folks um thank you for joining me again today in my book review i am reviewing a book by carl newport um called deep work um and i'll talk a little bit about the book as we go yes i recognize that behind me is a golf club it's okay fair enough i see it it's there um i play a little bit of golf in the living room so <laughs> which is why it's there ignore it um And in uh, celebration of the uh, Carl Newport and what he means to talk about in the book, I have put here the Women in Tech um, UN Equals Award that we won uh, last year. Just to prove that deep work works. Anyway, so who is Carl Newport? Carl Newport is a Georgetown Associate Professor who's written quite has a blog um and a website that uh, provides like studying tips and helps uh college students do well um and then i think in the last couple of years he's branched into writing more for grown-ups if that makes any sense his last the last book before deep work was actually really good which was so good they can't ignore you which was specifically targeted at i think people that were creating careers or in the process of molding their careers and um i haven't read it because i i think i'm a little bit far gone i'm, I'm still molding my career but I, I think the his audience are a little bit younger than than me for that book but <coughs> deep work um is sort of a reference book now i've read it a couple of times it's a reference book now i go back to um just to <coughs> just to sort of refresh my mind so what's the premise of the book so carl newport's premise is that in order to work on an elite level or to be able to produce on an elite level we must we must work deeply looking at um at at what the wildly important task i'll say that again in order for us to produce work at an elite level we must spend time concentrating on the wildly important things the wildly important things for us in our career and pushing away all the distractions now that is a premise of the book and then he goes on to tell us how we can make that happen he uses two terms in the book that i, I want i will talk about a little bit deep work versus shallow work so deep work um requires you to concentrate and spend time um on priority tasks and then shallow work um he he Things about as more logistical, uh, repetitive routine, um, non-priority tasks. So routine, logistical-based tasks like checking emails. Um, he actually has that. He has a lot of content on just how people. There are people who have who produce at elite level. Someone like Adam Grant, who's the youngest um, professor at the Stanford University and just how people ch have chosen to be radical about their time and what they this they put their time and energy on so people deciding not to engage with email at all now that's something i cannot do uh i do engage with email but it, it makes sense to do it once like an hour a whole day which i would like to do i don't do that yet um but he talks about just how emails and responding to emails and answering emails just do not help you perform on an elite level uh he also talks about social media so there's a whole conversation on social media and how it doesn't help you perform on an, on an elite level he one of the interesting things about him is he's actually never had a social media account 
Um, so he's not on Facebook. He's not. He's not. He's not anywhere. So that's that's interesting. Um, and he talks about how important that is, just in enabling him to produce on an elite level. So let me. Where are my notes? Yeah. Let me. He has four rules. Um, if I have any criticism about this book, it is that actually I think the core of the book is the four rules and everything else is fluff and I get it there's a lot of like examples and talk and whatever like this could essentially be a blog post a long blog post admittedly um but yeah there is like the rules the core rules are just the book and everything else it's just a lot of fluff so if you want to like get straight to the point it might be just like read the first few pages and then go to the rules and read through the rules okay so rule number one develop a philosophy for deep work what does that mean So, Carl Newport, in his book Deep Work, has a number of rules. Rule one is find your deep work philosophy. Not quite sure. Um, he has a lot of philosophies in there, but I talk about maybe three. And then you can go look at the rest. So, the first one is the monastic, right? So, that's impractical for most people but actually really practical for people that like write books which is maximize literally radically cut out radically cut out all other work except for your priority work so authors for instance go away and they in, in some cabin somewhere and they work all day on finishing their book that's the monastic way. Um, that's an example where I think J.K. Rowling, the, the, the lady that wrote the Harry Potter books, uh, when I think when she was writing the very last one or was having problems finishing it, decided to check herself into um, a $1,000, um, I think, dollar a night hotel and um to give her pressure and to and just concentrate on working and so i mean every day she didn't finish the book that's a thousand dollars so that's good for people like authors and have control of their time um but not practical for everyone then the next one is the the is it bimodial or something like that he, that what's where maximizing your deep work but leaving space for your shallow work um and ensuring that you know so that could be someone who has eight hour days but three hours for deep work maybe research or you know creativity or innovating and then the rest of the work time goes into like emails and meetings and that sort of thing again oh let me read this to you where is my kindle okay so there is an example for like radical someone who radically decided that so i'm checking my thing who decided that oh page 104 page 104 who decided that they were not going to answer emails just because emails didn't help their life or didn't help them work on an elite level uh page one four four right so he has a he has a text it says and this is from uh stevenson i think he's a professor and it says persons who wish to interfere with my concentration are politely requested not to do so <laughs> um and one that i do not answer emails lest my communications policies key message 
get lost in the beverage, I will put it here succinctly. All of my time and attention are spoken for several times over. Please do not ask for them. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is... Okay, so you can only do this when you are... Yeah, like you have absolute control of your time. Or you are like a university professor. So these guys are like university professors that do a lot of deep work in researching and doing breakthroughs. And they're just like go away do not disturb me i am doing important work here so that's the monastic um and then there's by monastic so you know so you do three hours of deep work and then you go away and you answer emails and you go and speak at conferences and that sort of thing and i think that's mm, well that might be my rhythm but there's also so like there's people who maybe spend three months sitting somewhere writing and then come and spend three months of the year sitting somewhere doing something else that's also the bi monastic um then the sorry i'm reading my notes here then the um the last well not the last one but the the third one that i'm going to talk about is rhythmic um which is more about i mean like you have a day job and you cannot get away with not doing like concentrating on one thing and so it is, so it's basically saying, okay, so I will write every day one page for this book that I'm putting together, or I will every day do research on this topic, or I'll every day work on creating, um, creating something for my industry, or, you know, so it's, it's rhythmic. So every day you do one hour a day, you'd work on it. One hour of your day, you work on it rhythmically, right? Um, that's that's good he also talks about sort of ritualizing so rituals are important now, i've said this before uh in my last review rituals are definitely important um and so he says what well, like ritualizing it so there are, sorry let me just say there are other types the journalistic philosophies and things like that but you go read them in the book um he he, he generally talks about ritualizing uh so making this as part of your rituals for the days so you have to in, in terms of defining your deep work scheduling you have to ask yourself where am i going to do deep work and how long am i going to do it and uh, what well, how will i how will i do it once i'm started right and then uh, how 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 will i support my work so it's important to ask yourself questions in order to... If there's, there's some work in, in done in designing, designing your own uh, deep work. So that's rule one. Rule two, he says embrace boredom. Carl Newport says embrace boredom. And I, I, okay, so I get that. So part of it is our brains now with how, how just the world works. We're trying to reach for something to alleviate our boredom. And he's saying, actually train your brain to be okay with boredom. Take long walks and just be in your own head. You know, pick, pick a topic and mull it over and over and over. Do not, do not seek to alleviate your boredom. Which I think it's it's a worthwhile. It, it helps just the rewiring of your brain because now we're just we just have so many things that will enable us to just not, you know, like rewire your brain. Uh, be okay with being bored. I have had the best ideas when I'm bored, um, so I agree with that. Rule three: quit social media. Okay. So I told you before that Carl Newport himself, he's never had a social media account. So he has, he actually has no pity for those of us who think social media is, is important. Now he goes through a, a whole lot of discussions around um, why, why you really don't need social media, which it's fair. Um, I, he says in the book that at least try and take a sabbatical, 30 days. Take away all your social media. So I do not have like Facebook and Twitter and a couple of things on my phone. I just have Instagram. 
uh, because it's mobile and I, I do want to be able to that's the only place I can use it so he says take 30 days sabbatical just to get a sense of what you absolutely need and what you absolutely do not need um, if you use social media for work um, he asks that you be more strategic about it rather than sort of scroll and post and scroll and post um, actually have a plan and have a design for it versus the, yeah versus the just just spending your time on social media um, people will say people say that oh i use it to meet friends and like he's like that's fine but can you dedicate 20 minutes of your day to it just 20 minutes of your day not your whole day to it um he would rather you quit social media but i think everybody should do a social media fast um at least 30 days every year 60 days if you can every year you will not die i promise like i promise you that you will not die try to keep these things under 10 minutes but uh these books are like quite a lot so the final rule, rule for uh Kanyupo talks about just minimizing your your shallow work so figure out what are the non-cognitive logistical tasks that are part of your day and do as much as you can to minimize it. Some people can cut out email completely. I mean, okay, so here's a thought. I also thought it'd be interesting if you just like, if you could just cut out email and have somebody look at your emails and pull out the important ones each, put out ones for each week and then like print it out for you and then I suppose it's old school. Yeah, print it out for you and have you answer them like once a week. I wonder, <laughs> I don't know, it might be interesting to try that. I wonder if that would help. Anyway, so those are the four rules. I think that's the, like, the core of the book. Oh, and one last thing. So he, he mentions the 4DX rules. 4DX rules is from... Uh, the book on um, the four rules of efficiency. Hold on, let me try and find it here. Um, I've read the book. It's a good book. Um, he he talks he talks about prioritizing using those rules. So I've read I've read the book. Um, I'm just trying to find the name of the book. Right, so he says use the rules or the, the four disciplines of execution, um, which is actually a good book. I've read it. I read the early part of this year, uh, the 4DX rules, um, which is discipline one. The four disciplines are focused on the wildly important. Um, so it's just like, you know, do, do less of things that are exceptionally important. Like, for instance, for me, I would... I know just from data that I would attract more clients if I wrote more white papers and more blog posts. Now, do I do more of it? No. Um, I should. <laughs> I should. I really should. Um, but yeah, focus on the wildly important. Um, the things that are important for you to achieve your goals. Um, the top two should be, you know should be important to you so if you are a ceo or a c-level executive and if it's 
creating the right strategy that's what is important to you and you need deep work um, and concentrated amount of time in order to read understand what's going on in the sector be able to um, figure out trends and be able to ex uh, execute strategy that's what you should be doing most of the time okay um, rather than sort of like signing off on projects I don't know to act on lead measures so you know you should have measures you should have um, KPIs lead measures are not KPIs per se but read the book uh, for DX it's a good book I've read it um, lead and lag measures so lead measures are, are measures uh, so they're like almost like pre KPIs and lag measures are so for instance revenue numbers at the end of the month are lag measures um, because they happen after the fact uh, a lead measure for that, for instance, will be talking to three clients per day. So that's three clients per day, and that will necessarily lead to, so, you know, act on lead measures. Um, keep a compelling scoreboard. I keep meaning to, I do have an Excel sheet. I do have an Excel sheet, which I don't look at often. But keep a compelling scoreboard um, and that will enable you to sort of look at what's happening and discipline for create a cadence of accountability. So here his point is that, you know, you can't just start deep working on everything. You just got to figure out what your priorities are to deep work on. And he he uses the, the 4DX measures to be able to figure out what exactly what exactly he needs to be doing what deep work he, he exactly needs to be doing. Anyway, I tried to keep this under 10 minutes, but it's clearly not going to happen. Um, but I think it's... So here are my thoughts at the end of it. I think that this book is a, it's a good book. There's a lot of fluff. I've said it before, there's a lot of fluff. The cores are the rules of the book. You can, like again, read the first page and then read the last... The, read the first page and maybe read the last pages and then like just read the rules if you, you're pressed for time so it's a fairly good book um i hope you do get it because i think it's an important book for our time do you get it and read let me know let me know like let me know in the comments if this was useful if you did get the book and how you enjoyed it all right I'm out. See you the next time I read something interesting I want to share. <laughs> All right. Have a profitable week. A profitable and impactive week. Right. See you later.